This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. And welcome to the x everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, and for the next four hours, I'm your host and your guide as together we cross the time-space continuum to this place that I call the x It's a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. And the Exxon comes to you Monday through Friday from 10 p.m. Eastern until 6 a.m. Eastern on the Talkstar Radio Network, the Exxon Broadcast Network, UK High Definition Radio, Euro High Definition Radio, Star Cable, and our growing family of broadcast affiliates right across Canada, the United States, Central America, the Caribbean, South America, the Pacific Rim, Asia, India, Africa, and Europe. Worldwide toll-free, 1-800-610-7035. Email exxon at exxonradiotv.com. On MSN Messenger, exxonradiotv at hotmail.com. And our website, www.exxonradiotv.com. Over the last couple of days, Exonation, as you well know, uh, whether you're on our mailing list or whether you're a frequent listener to the show, whether you go to our iTunes uh, download at Apple iTunes, or if you go to the X Zone podcast, you're seeing Beware of Publish America all over the place. I've got to tell you something. The stories that I am getting on a daily basis, they just boggle my mind. I, I find it unbelievable that with what is going on, the amount of people who have had Horrific nightmares, but I'm not talking about sleeping nightmares, live living nightmares because of Publish America. And and yet, here's here's the ironic part. The problems go way back to 2005, and yet they're still in business. People have made reports to the Better Business Bureau in Maryland because this company is based in Maryland. People have made complaints to the Attorney General's office, the FBI, local law enforcement, local consumer and federal consumer groups. And nothing, nothing is done. We've heard of strong arm tactics by Publish America. We've heard of email campaigns allegedly from staff at Publish America. These people who put their faith, their trust, their dreams, their desires into Publish America are being destroyed. They're being battered. They are getting their rights ripped away from them. They are being prevented from publishing their own works. We've heard stories about fraud, royalty theft. We've heard stories on violation of international copyright laws. And yet... This company is still around. We have asked for interviews on air. We have asked for statements from Publish America that we could read on air if they don't want to join us for one reason or another. And we have received absolutely no response to our inquiries. What are they hiding? What is the story behind 
Publish America. When I come back from this two-minute commercial break, we're going to be speaking to a young lady who firsthand will tell you about the living nightmare that she is living because of the people at Publish America. www.publish I'm sorry, www.bewareofpublishamerica.com. We have over 195 articles that we have found on the internet that have been submitted to us by people who have been ripped off. I'll be back on the other side of this two-minute commercial break with my first guest tonight. Paula Comerford is going to be joining us, talking about her nightmare with Publish America. My name is Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon, a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. But whatever you do, don't rip off the good people who listen to this show and the good people who put their faith, their heart, their hard work into your hands just for you to rip them off. I don't stand for that. I'll be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine like hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining room can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you're visiting, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic Felsmere. Or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, old Florida cuisine at its best. Are you interested in the paranormal, ghosts, UFOs, or psychic phenomenon? Join me, Tim Bartley, co-host of Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, coming mid-January 2017 to the XZBN. We will channel spirits live and talk to them, revealing all kinds of amazing information. Spiritual attachments will be found and removed on the show, and so much more. To find out when you can listen to Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, visit www.xzbn.net for listeners on both sides of the veil. And welcome back, everyone. This is The Exxon. My name is Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our studios in beautiful, yet very cold, Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. And once again, if you're just joining us for the first time this year after being off for the last couple of days, to you and yours, a very, very happy, spiritually filled, love-filled, joyous, and healthy and prosperous New Year from everyone here at the Exxon Radio Show, the Exxon TV Show, the X Chronicles newspaper, and all the companies of Relmar McConnell Media Company. Exxon Nation, uh, as you have been listening to me over the last couple of days talking about a company called Publish America, they are, well, we don't really understand what they are, but we do know one thing. They're ripping people off. It's that plain. It's that simple. You know, we talk about allegations. We talk about the what if factor. But when a company does not respond to the Better Business Bureau and when a company sends horrific emails to people who have entrusted them with their dreams, their aspirations. Let me put it to you this way. Just imagine you have written a book. It's taken you years. You've poured your heart into this book. You've gone the regular traditional publishing route and you're kind of getting really depressed because all you keep on getting are rejection letters. It's not that your book is bad. It's just that you haven't found that niche yet. You hear of a company called Publish America. You go online to their website and publish America. These people want to publish Americans, right? So you submit your manuscript 
And lo and behold, one day you go to your email box and they are proud to tell you that you are going to have your book published. They are going to publish your book. And you know what, Exo Nation? It's not going to cost you one penny. Filled with pride, filled with excitement, you get on that phone and you just tell everyone you know that you are going to be a published author. You get on the emails, you get on the BBMs, you get on whatever social media you use. You're proud. But all that glitters is not gold. Joining me now, Exo Nation, is a young lady who's going to tell us firsthand about her nightmare with Publish America. And we have on BewareOfPublishAmerica.com over 195 articles on this company. We're inviting you to go there and make up your own mind. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm not a biased person. But this company has pissed me off. This company is ripping people off. This company is depriving people of their dreams. And in my book, you just don't do that. Donna Comerford, welcome to the X-Zone. I'm Thank sorry, you. Paula. Paula Comerford. Uh, Paula, tell us about, first of all, a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I'm retired. I'm 66 years old. I live in rural Minnesota, mm-hmm. uh, in between the turkey barns and <laughs> the cornfield. Oh, right. My kind of lady. I've, li- I've, lived, I've lived here for quite a few years. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've grown t- accustomed to it. <laughs> What was your inspiration into becoming an author, and what was your book about? What is your book about, I should say? uh, My first book, what it was, is about 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, My my parents were in uh, child evangelism, Mm -hmm. and they traveled all over uh, California, Oregon, and Washington State doing vacation Bible schools with marionettes. Mm Mm-hmm. And so in the summertime, I would load up my kids in my camper and my sister and her kids, and we would follow them. And in the process, I started writing stories for the marionettes, Mm -hmm. and I started writing songs. And just in 2011, I thought, why don't I take those songs and make them into books? Yeah. So that's that's what I did. I started with uh, the one that I didn't like first, My Garden and Me, mm-hmm. and sent it off to Publish America. And, of course, they accepted it right off the bat. How, now, and, let, me, let me just stop you here, okay? Because I want you to tell our audience firsthand what it felt like when you got that letter stating that they were going to publish your book. Well, I, I was in a state of shock because I didn't believe the book was that good. That was why I sent my garden in me, because it wasn't one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. And so I was quite surprised when it was accepted. No questions asked. And I thought, well, wow, maybe maybe it is as good. Maybe it is better than what I think, you know. Yes. And... Uh, <laughs> And I was just, you know, I thought, okay, and everything everything was going smooth with that book. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wasn't too pleased with um, the cover, yeah. and they had missed, they, when I had to do the editing, they had missed the whole complete punchline from the very end of the book. My gosh. So I had to get a hold of them right away, because without that last line in the book, the book was meaningless. Now, how many... And, uh, <laughs> but you... they took care of that. Well, that's good. Right away. Well, that's good. You know, and said, yeah. okay, so that was going so well, I mm-hmm. asked them if they would be interested in some more, because I had 14 books, children's books, sitting here done. Mm-hmm. So I had a series uh, called Harry Toad. Harry Toad? Yeah, it's about... Uh, a little mouse walking through the woods, and he runs into a hairy toad, and mm. they sit down and have a little conversation, and the little mouse ends up eating part of the toad's dinner, which was flies, and he got sick. Mm. So it's just for little children, sure. what it is. So I sent that in, mm-hmm. and they accepted it, too, right away. 
And I thought, wow. So my garden and me came out in May of 2011. And then Harry Toad came out in June. And so I thought, okay, um, I have a series of Harry Toads. Maybe I should send in Harry's haircut and Harry's shoe fly pie and see if they want to do a series. Of course, they said yes. Now, between the so time now, between the time you sent the the manuscripts in to the time that you received a reply saying yes, you know, are we talking weeks? Are we talking months? Are we talking days? We're, we're talking days. Really? Wow. Because from May until July, I had four books under contract. Now, but what happened was this, my garden and me had been on the market mm-hmm. for a month. Harry Toad had been on the market for three days. And up to this point, everything, everything was fine. But then I got an email, and it said, your books are not selling. And I went, what? Hmm. Well, they haven't been on the market long enough. Yeah. You know? And they said, well, in order for us to continue, you are going to have to buy 49, uh, 49 of your own books. And how to much? offset our printing costs. Now, now, first of all, how much was your book being sold for by publisher? Twenty four ninety nine. All right, twenty four ninety nine. And as the author, how much were they expecting you to pay for those forty nine books? You get a twenty percent discount as an author. So let's see, about uh, about nineteen bucks a book. Uh huh. Right. So nineteen uh, nineteen times fifty, let's say, well, that's mm-hmm. that's a good chunk of change. I know, and I couldn't afford that. Yeah, and so that was kind of like the first red flag. Yes, and not too long after that is when they sent the special promo for Edinburgh International Book Fest in Scotland. Uh, is this where it ties into J.R. Rowling? No, no that was no. afterwards. That was afterwards? Was, right. Oh. Edinburgh was first. All right, let's... So I did some research, and I got a hold of the executive manager of Edinburgh Book Fest, mm-hmm. and her name is Frances. Yes. And I sent her a copy of the promo. Well, do you know what hit the fan? <laughs> I can only imagine. Because, yeah, because they... Publish America was not going to be at the fest. Publish America would have to have a special invite, mm-hmm. which they did not have. So uh, Francis's attorneys from from Scotland sent them a cease and desist letter. Yes, of course. Mm-hmm. Now, right after that, I got a promo, mm-hmm. a special promo for Disney. In Hollywood. Right. So I sent that promo off to the proper people. At Disney. And, yeah, and you, the, you know what? Hit the fan again. Again. And they sent a cease and desist letter to Publish America also. So before this could even get over with, mm-hmm. we got the one for J.K. Rollins. And, of course, uh, I don't think there's anybody on this planet who doesn't know who J.K. Rollins is. Uh, We're talking about the lady behind Harry Potter. Right. Yeah. And so I looked up her manager, and I sent them a copy of the promo right away. Well, you know what happened with that. Uh, The same thing that happened with Disney and the book fair in Edinburgh. It hit the fan. Mm Mm-hmm. And of course, and the Scotland National Library, and, of course, everything that I sent to Francis that Mm -hmm. I didn't have a contact for over there, she would go ahead and send it All right. to the proper people. You and I have to take our news break at the bottom of the hour, Paula. Please stand by. It's great talking to you. Thank you very much okay. for sharing your story with us. Exo Nation, right. uh, Paula Comerford is our special guest. We're talking about... Uh, do I have to mention their name, Craig? All right. <laughs> Publish America. Hey, you want to find out the real story of Publish America? Visit our website that we put up, www.publishamerica.com. Beware of publishamerica.com.
Paula Comerford and I will be back on the other side of the news as the Exxon continues right here from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. My name is Rob McConnell. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. worldwide toll free. Email exxon at exxon radio. Excuse me, TV.com on MSN Messenger, Exxon Radio TV at Hotmail.com and our website, www.exxonradiotv.com. Paula Comerford is our special guest. We're talking about her nightmare, I guess that's being polite, when dealing with Publish America. And if you'd like to find out what we found out about Publish America, visit our website at www.publishamerica. Beware of publishamerica.com. God, I nearly gave them a free plug. www.bewareofamericapublish.com. Paula, uh, yeah, all right, so the, the you-know-what hit the fan with, uh, let me see, Edinburgh. It hit the fan with um, Disney. It hit the fan with the people of um, the Harry Potter group. But and uh, Graph Expo, my lord, it goes on. And and Christian Booksellers Association. All right, let me ask you this. <laughs> let, 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 let me ask you this: How have they been able to stay afloat? How have they been able to get away with the with what they're getting away with? They have a CD lawyer. All oh, right, but <laughs> they 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 have a CD lawyer, but. What about the governmental agencies? What about law enforcement? What about the attorney general? I, what about the FBI, I, I, Homeland? You know, there, there's got to be something here that can be done to shut these people down. There, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of complaints that have been filed in Maryland. Maryland does nothing. Uh, I was online the other day mm-hmm. on consumer alerts, and right. they had a big alert of a fraud, a scam, with some kind of a medical company in Maryland. Mm-hmm. And and the Better Business Bureau was investigating it. And I, I emailed them, and I said, you know, how can you do this? You're not paying any attention to Publish America. And what did they say? You know, they never answered me. What are some of the, Now, I understand that some people who are trying to get back the rights to their books because apparently they have, you know, you sign a seven-year contract with Publish America, they send you a dollar, and, uh, um, you know, and, and that ties you in for seven years. That, and some people who have actually had the light turn on have tried to get their, their rights back to publish their own book, and they don't have very good luck. No. Uh, I started, I, after was this J.K. Rollins thing, mm-hmm. I decided to build a website and uh, so that maybe there, were, there was something that I could do. Right. And so be, since summer uh, and now, I've gotten five authors out of their contracts. And four out of those five are now helping me with others. I was getting a request for a contact 
contract release maybe one or two a month. And now I'm getting four to five a week. Let me ask you this. Hypothetically, how many people do you imagine that are still in the clutches of Publish America that would love to get away from them? Well, they say they have anywhere from 30,000 to 60,000 authors right now under contract. And I I don't believe that. Mm -hmm. But if it's 30,000, say, I would believe that more than half want out of their contract. I understand that Publish America, uh, you know, it seems to be... uh less than less than professional when it comes to dealing with their authors that uh, I've read some of the emails online and they treat their authors like crap. Well, yes. Yeah. So one of the things that they've done since the J.K. Rowling thing hit is they've added disclaimers to their promos, which they never had before. Hmm. And uh, another thing is that they you there's no way to contact them where they had 17 email uh, addresses where you could contact them at any time, that shut completely down. They, they all come back as failures. So the only way that you can get a hold of Publish America is by using a special form. And over half of those requests, comments, questions, mm-hmm. are deleted. All right, so you've got all these authors. You've got them basically being the sole source of revenue for Publish America. Right. So you as an author who have all this hard work, you've published, you know, you've written your book, you, you've you gone through the pains of, I'm, I'm sure many authors have received re- rejection letters from other publishing houses. They go to Publish oh, America. Yeah. Publish America says, sure, come on. Yeah, we love your book. We're going to publish you. Here's your dollar. Sign the seven-year contract, and then a little later... And the contract has been changed now. Oh, it's no longer seven years, it's ten years. They they sent out a new contract form um, about two months ago, and it's been changed to ten years. To ten years. Mm -hmm. But what do they do for you? They didn't do much for me. Thank goodness they were so mad at me. Uh, they had access to my website, of course, that they canceled my contracts in July, all four of them. All right, so you're so one I of the lucky, lucky ones. <laughs> I yeah. was lucky. Yeah. So how would but somebody... But these other mm-hmm. authors, they can't, they, they're doing everything. It, I, I sit down and, and I almost cry because... I know how they feel, and mm-hmm. the, and I know what's been done to them. And, and I, my hands are tied more and more every day. The things that I could do to get them out of their contract in the summertime, it went fairly fast and fairly easy. But now, see, it's getting harder and harder because there's no communication. They're getting nastier and nastier. I have got a, a vet in Texas. He mm-hmm. writes books for vets. Right. His name is Tom, and he has he travels all over the United States in his RV with his wife for special uh, doings for veterans. And they, he's under contract with Publish America, and we've been trying to get him out for three months. And he has legitimate complaints. They they put ads in his books. Mm-hmm that are not even, that are for somebody else's books. A few of the books that he purchased had the right cover and the right author, but the inside of the book was somebody else's work. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Oh, my Lord. (laughs) And it's just, it goes on and on. A uh, one lady, Cappy, who mm-hmm. got out of her contract last summer, she's helping me. She threatened to go right to their office with official papers to get out of her contract. And they canceled her contract. So we thought, well, we'll use that tactic. Maybe that'll work again, but it won't. <laughs> 
now I've got another lady that has done the same thing, and they've told her that the doors will be locked. Right. She will not gain access, and if she shows up on the property, they will have a police escort her off. Tell me something. What kind of marketing does Publish America do for its authors? Well, they say (laughs) they did put my book on Amazon, Mm -hmm. uh, Barnes & Noble, a few others, um, and they were there. Right. Uh, Who's going to buy them for that? that kind of a prize, the 20-page children's book for, you know, twenty four ninety nine. I Whoa. don't think so. No, I, you, you know, know that's yeah. outrageous. Does, it, does and, the author have any control in, in uh, you know, the marketing, uh, the marketability of where they put the no. book? None. No, it's written, it's written right on the contract that the publisher that's the price. Now, now tell me something here. Maybe you can help me understand this. Are they a publishing house or are they a Vanity Press uh, print-on-demand outfit? I'm, I'm not sure exactly what that means. Mm-hmm. This is what I have discovered. They did have printing uh, companies work for them in the past. Right. Lightning Source, I believe, was one of them. And they were <laughs> in quite a, a legal battle. And so, from what I understand now, they have a little back room, and they have their own printing press. And so, none of the none of the books that mm-hmm. you that are on the market are stocked on any shelves. You go to a Barnes and Noble yeah. bookstore right now; mm-hmm. there will be nothing stocked on the shelves from Publish America. How come? Because they won't put them there. Publish America won't put them there, or the oh, Publish War? America would love to have them there, but right. Barnes and Noble won't do it. Why not? You can order. You can order the book, mm-hmm. and then they send the order to Publish America, and then Publish America goes in their little back room, right? And they print it, and then they send it to Barnes and Noble, and then you get it. You know, but you go into Barnes and Noble and you see all these the massive uh, you know, display of books, just like chapters up here in Canada. Why won't mm-hmm. chapters or Barnes and Noble or any other bookstore actually take the books that are printed by Publish America? Well, there's something in there about uh, a no return policy if they don't sell. Ooh. Mm-hmm. So this way here. If the bookstore was to buy, let's say, 10 copies, none sold, the bookstore would be out the 10 copies because Publish America doesn't take anything back. Right. I gotcha. I understand. <laughs> out. Well, you know, we, you really can't blame the bookstore for that, can you? No. 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 And the other thing that's really odd is that mm-hmm. when, when I received my cancellation right. on my contract, mm-hmm. it states on there that they will not have any in print, will have not any in the stock, but everything has been destroyed. Yeah. And, right, so that was in July, and now I find myself on the Internet under Google search, and I find both my books listed everywhere for sale. But who's publishing those books that are for sale that you have the rights for? Uh, I don't know. You order them. Yeah. They, whoever the online bookstore is, they send the order to Publish America. Publish America prints it and sends it out. That, and I know this for sure. But, the, but that, since you've been released from your contract, that's a blatant violation of international copyright law. Yes, it is. And I found them on sale in Australia, in Korea, in Holland. Now, isn't, in Italy. <laughs> is, isn't violation of copyright law under the jurisdiction of the Federal Bureau of Investigation? Right. What is the and, FBI and doing? And they have all been contacted. And, and what are they saying? What are they doing? Nothing. Hypothetically, Absolutely once once again, nothing. maybe maybe you can help me here to understand. What, what do you believe or what have you heard from the authors who have contacted you? And God bless you for the great work you're doing to help so many other people. My hat is off to you, Paula. Oh, thank you. How, how much do you think the, the average author is losing to publish America? Well, they're not receiving any royalties. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. And my books could be selling everywhere, abroad, 
and I have no, there's no way that I can find out how many are sold or have been sold. You know, I, I call, I called Barnes and Noble and mm-hmm. I called Amazon and I said, please, these books are no longer under contract. Take them off your online bookstore. They said they could not do that. The publisher had to take them off. So I contact Publish America and say, I want these books off these online bookstores. Mm -hmm. And their reply is, well, we can't do that. But wait a minute. They can't do that. They've released the book back to you. They're in violation of copyright. They're in violation of a federal and international law. Mm -hmm. I know. This is ludicrous. And the attorneys, they won't touch it. I have an attorney in Maryland mm-hmm. that since, since May, I have been sending him yes. every single promo copy, I've, I've, everything. He's got a stack like you wouldn't believe. And also, the same thing I send to Frederick's News Post in Maryland, because mm-hmm. the editor called me and asked me to. He assigned me an investigative reporter so she could put together some promo fraud. Right. And they're still working on that. And it's been months. So I am beginning to wonder if PA doesn't have a few people in their back pockets. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. You and I have to take our final break, Paula. When we come back, let's talk about some of the emails that, (laughs) yeah, you know where I'm going with this, that are allegedly coming from Publish America. Not just Publish America, but their lawyer. My name is Rob McCuddle. This is the Exxon. Paula Comerford is our very special guest. Once again, Paula, God bless you for the great work you're doing to help so many people out. Well, thank you. Paula, and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break as the Exxon continues talking about Publish America. Don't forget www.bewareofpublishamerica.com. My name is Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon Paula, and I will be back on the other side of this break. Whatever you do, if you have to go away, back in four minutes. Hey, Dogs in the Central. Uh, 19 Dogs, okay? Officers on the scene. Hi, I'm Larry Lawson, host of Paranormal Stakeout. With over 36 years in law enforcement, I have learned a few things. The most important is the proper gathering and preservation of evidence is vital to putting the bad guy behind bars. It's no different in the world of paranormal investigation, whether it's the search for the afterlife, cryptozoology, UFOs, and extraterrestrials. How we gather the evidence, preserve that evidence, and present it to a jury of our peers will make the ultimate difference in proving the existence of worlds and entities that are beyond our imagination. Join me, Larry Lawson, every week on Paranormal Stakeout when, along with my guests, we'll take a journey to prove with indisputable evidence what man has struggled to believe for centuries. Go to xzbn.net for the broadcast schedule and check me out at paranormalstakeout.com. True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. You're listening to the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. X-Zone Nation, uh, Paula Comerford is our special guest. We're talking about uh, her nightmare with Publish America, and just not Paula. I'm telling you, we get emails every day from people who have uh, suffered at the hands of this company, people who have not received their royalties, people who 
you know, uh, uh, have signed a contract. Publish America is doing nothing with them and with their books, and yet they refuse to release them from their contracts. And when they persist, they start getting strange emails. And, and Paula, I understand you've received a couple of these strange emails yourself. Oh, yes. The the first few that I got were just, uh, this is considered harassment, and mm -hmm. we have taken people to court for this, and you could lose your home, you could, <laughs> on and on. And I didn't pay any attention to them. And, uh, then all of a sudden, and not this was not on spam. This was in my e box. I got three emails. They were forwarded to me from Craigslist with Victor Catrella's email address on it. Who now, is go the in house attorney for Publish America. And at first, I thought, I, I couldn't believe it. I, I just, I thought, no. No, this can't be. And uh, when I got the three in a row, I'm going, I, I, I just couldn't believe it. I just could not believe it. So the first thing I did mm -hmm. was I emailed Publish America, and I said, I have received these porn emails. Now, they were, they were pornographic emails that, that were sent to you, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. And... Uh, from Victor Cutrella's email address, I want an explanation. Mm -hmm. And they emailed me back and said, you're lying. If emails like that do exist, you created them. Okay. And I thought, okay. And I emailed them back. I said, you dare? You dare to call me a liar? Well, then I contacted an attorney, mm -hmm. and I, I asked him if there was anything that we could do about this. It's, it's, it's internet fraud, is what I consider it. And he said, no, we would have to prove without a shadow of a doubt that Victor did send those emails. <laughs> and in order to take it to court, I would have to have like $20,000 to put it down. Ouch. So yeah. not only is Published America making money off the authors, but apparently the legal system is as well. Uh -huh. So then I thought, okay, fine. I'm just going to keep going with the promo fraud. I can mm -hmm. handle that. And then I got an email from someone else that had received porn emails from the same person. Paula, I hate to do this to you, but we've run out of time for tonight. I'd love to have you back on next week, if that works with your schedule, to continue this, because this is a story that has to be totally exposed. Paula, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a great pleasure talking to you. And once again, uh, you know, it's great to talk to somebody who likes to be part of a solution instead of part of the problem. So God bless you for that. Well, thank you so much for having me, Rob. Quickly, Paula, is there a website our listeners can go to to find out more? Well, you just put in Paula, Paula Comma, Comma, Paula Comerford slash Publish America, and my name will come up. All, all right, Paula, take care of yourself, dear. Nice talking to you, Exo Nation, Paula Comerford. And don't forget our website, beware of publishamerica.com. I'll be back after the news at six and a half minutes past. Don't go away.